Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to the third meeting of the Committee of African Heads of States and Governments on Climate Change this year. As you well know, this gathering is being held less than two months ahead of COP27. In this regard, I would like to thank President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt, for taking leadership in hosting the event on behalf of Africa in Sharm el-Sheikh this November. The world is at a critical juncture experiencing multiple crises simultaneously that pose an existential threat to people, planetary ecosystems, and shared prosperity. COP27 is being held against a backdrop of heightened economic and geopolitical challenges. We are all grappling with the effect and impact of COVID-19 pandemic, growing food insecurity, and energy crisis that is adversely affecting our people together with our economies. While these are important issues affecting the entire world, the greatest challenge that connects our world is climate change. Unfortunately, due to the many pressing concerns, COP27 has not been given the prominence it deserves. Excellencies, the recently released Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report confirmed that Africa is impacted more than other regions by climate change, despite our contribution of less than 4% of total emissions. This report further places Africa's adaptation annual needs at US dollars 86.5 billion by the year 2030. Conversely, African countries are contributing more than their fair share for adaptation efforts, currently estimated at 10% of GDP annually. It is my hope that we will, at the COP27, call for enhanced adaptation efforts, fulfillment, and implementation of pledges already made. As the world restarts its engines for production and industrialization post the pandemic, there is sharper focus on energy transition. At COP26 held in Glasgow last year, nearly 200 countries made an unprecedented and historic pledge to face down fossil fuel subsidies and reduce the use of coal. In light of this decision, African countries will need financial and technical support for a just transition to low carbon, clean technologies to drive our industrial and productive sectors such as agriculture, infrastructure development, and job creation. Finally, building resilience to address the multiple crises and risks while ensuring the impact of climate change on Africa remains high on the global political agenda and must remain a priority for car hosts as we go to Sharm el Sheikh in November. There being no objection, the car host report that has just been read is hereby adopted. The outcome of this meeting The outcome of this meeting will be presented in the next Africa Union General Assembly in February 2023. In closing, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thank all member states that joined this meeting in person or virtually. COP27 President designate chairs of the AMSEN and AGN for their commitment to ensure that Africa has a common position. Uh, for COP27. I also thank the Africa Union Commission and its, and its able chair for convening this meeting and for effectively playing their role as mandated by the Assembly of States and Governments. I once again reiterate our commitment to this process and will continue to provide guidance and leadership whenever called upon to ensure that we speak with one voice. Let us remember the vulnerable communities, ecosystems, and the future generations 
as we negotiate because we are their voice. It is for this reason that I urge all countries, our young people, civil society organizations, and members of the media to actively participate in COP27 to amplify our voice. The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>